I own a 2001 1HZ Toyota Land Cruiser. It'd be nice to have something a bit more comfortable, so I'm going to give the Cruiser a makeover. So I own a 2001 1HZ Toyota Land Cruiser and I've owned it for about seven years and the whole time I've owned it I've been doing things the old-fashioned way when it comes to camping so swag, setting up a gazebo, ice in an esky <laughs> but I'm doing a lot more adventuring these days so I thought It'd be nice to have something a bit more comfortable. So I'm gonna give the cruiser a makeover. I'm not gonna throw a whole bunch of money at the cruiser because I don't plan on having it for a whole lot longer. So this is gonna be a sort of makeover DIY slash on a budget. Also, I say I'm not gonna have it for much longer, but I've been saying that for years. Very reliable, they're slow, but they'll get you there. The old 1H said. So <laughs> I could end up with two cruisers, but I know I'm definitely getting a new cruiser. I might just keep my old one as well. I don't know. But anyway, let's go run through it. I'm gonna briefly run through the plans. So let's check it out. So this episode is gonna be all about the back half of the cruiser. All right, so here she is. As you can see, there's some pretty distinctive bar work on the front there. I will get around to giving the front half a bit of a transformation, but for now, I'm just gonna be focusing on the rear. All right, so as you can see, my camping setup is pretty much non-existent, but I'll be happy as long as I have three main things. And that's rooftop tent, a fridge to keep my food and drinks cold, and an awning to give me a bit of shade and protection from the weather. So it's not going to be anything fancy, it's going to be a pretty simple, easy setup. It's definitely going to be a lot better than it is now. So I am going to be keeping the exact same dog cage, it's just getting sheeted so that it's enclosed. And I'm getting a frame made up to bolt down onto the tray so that my rooftop tent can rest on top of it. So the dog cage I have now is way too open for me and I also can't really lock anything in there. So I'm going to change that by adding some lockable latches onto these doors. Then yeah, once this dog cage is enclosed, then I can actually lock it. I'll feel safe leaving things in here. And then I can also keep um, a secondary battery in here, my control box, a fridge, all that sort of stuff. So that's what's happening with this dog cage. So yeah, there's not much to the cruiser at the moment, but I'm super excited to be giving it this little transformation. And like I said, once I do upgrade utes, I will go all out on a fancy setup. But once I'm finished this makeover, it's really gonna have everything that I need to be out in the bush and just get me out adventuring. All right, I'm so excited because today is gonna be a productive one. Um, I'm dropping my dog cage over to James Booth Engineering and he's gonna start modifying it and also making my rooftop tent frame. So, after I drop that off, I'm heading over to Cairns City Paint and Panel and we're going to start painting my chassis. So I've sent my dog cage designs to James and I've basically asked him to make me a dog cage that's half enclosed to protect the electricals from the weather and half open so that if I do have any animals in there, they can breathe. Um, and then Gary is a friend of mine. He owns the paint and panel shop. And I'm basically just gonna give him a hand in sanding and preparing the chassis. He's gonna paint it, but yeah, we're just gonna smash it out together. Okay, so I've just dropped my cage off to James. So that's the dog cage dropped at James's. I'm not sure how long he'll have it for, but he'll give me a call when it's ready to pick up. And I'm just heading to Gary's paint and panel shop now. And we're gonna get stuck into the chassis. Um, it's actually not that bad. It doesn't have any rust on it, thank God. But um, I've been meaning to get the paint touched up for a while now as it's really flaky. So that's what we're doing today. I'm at 
at Can City Paint and Panel. I've just put the cruiser into the booth. And we're about to start sanding. hardware because today I'm going to be running around buying all the supplies that I'm going to need to change the timber on the tray and also paint the tray and the dog cage and stuff like that. Honestly so many different timber choices but I'm going with this one. Merbel, however you pronounce it. All right guys so I was advised that Mobile is a good timber to go with for the tray, uh, so I'm gonna go with that. And Cairns Hardware charges $5.70 per meter. So I need 20 boards and they're 2.7 meters long each. So I'm paying about $300 all up to buy all the timber to replace it on the tray. So that's not too bad. I'm gonna grab that and then we'll head to Bunnings and choose an oil for it. James sent me a message to let me know that the dog cage and the rooftop tent frame are finally ready to pick up and he also sent me a photo of how they turned out and it looks like exactly how I wanted it to so I'm really excited to go grab those now and show you guys how it turned out. on there so I'm heading to Bunnings right now we're gonna choose the paint I need to talk to the staff because I have no idea what I'm doing I need advice on what paint to get what primer and what spray gun I've never painted anything but if it doesn't turn out well or it flakes down the track I can always get it powder coated so it's not a big deal if it doesn't work out but I'm willing to give it a crack actually see out in the sunlight how much of a difference it is between the old and new timber but this will come up a really nice finish once the decking oil is on it all right so first up I'm gonna go over it with some sandpaper just to give the paint something to grip onto and then I'll run over it with some wax and grease and rubber probably should have worn gloves <laughs> Right, so now I'm gonna clean it up. Um, I've sanded the whole thing and then I'll be able to start painting. I 
I don't really know how this is going to go, but I bought a little spray gun from Bunnings. So first I will prime it up and then I'll give it some coats of satin black once it's all dry. Right, now for the fun part. I've mixed up the primer with some acetone to thin it for spraying. Um, and I'm ready to spray. Okay, so I painted the rooftop tent frame and I also painted the timber, but I forgot to press play on the GoPro. So <laughs> I'll show you guys now. It's over here drying. The dog actually walked all over it. So it's got little paw prints all across it, doesn't it? Did you walk on my fresh painted timber? Was that you or was that another dog? You look kind of sus to me. I'm gonna have to check your paw prints and see if they match the crime. Naughty boy. It looks really good in the light, so I'm happy with the oil I went with. I've already done two coats, so I'm just about to give it its final coat. But it turned out really nice. It's like a high satin, you can see the dogs walked all over it. So I painted the rooftop tent frame, I painted the timber, but I did not paint the dog cage. I decided last minute that I'm actually not gonna touch it. I'm gonna get Gary from Paint and Panel Shop to paint that for me. Um, just cause if I stuff that up, it's gonna be very noticeable. So now I'm gonna sit that timber up against the fence to dry. And then tomorrow is gonna be another fun day cause we're ripping all the old timber off the tray and we're painting the tray which I honestly should have painted the tray while I had it off, but I didn't have time on that particular day. So I'm gonna be doing it tomorrow. I'm actually not gonna pull it off at all. I'm gonna go over the paint job while it's on the ute. I'll just mask everything up and do it with my little spray gun that I bought from Bunnings. So that will be very interesting. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how, how I'm gonna go, but I'm willing to give it a try. <laughs> Once all the old timber is ripped off, I'm going to lay the new timber down. Hopefully it's the right length. I asked the guy at um, Cairns Hardware to cut them to a specific length. If they're not the right length, um, I'm pretty stuffed. I'll just have to saw them down, I guess. Hand saw them down. So yeah, that's tomorrow. Ripping the old timber off, laying the new timber down and screwing it, screwing it down. So, Oh, I'm so excited. This is probably going to be my favorite part of the of the little transformation. It's going to make the most difference and yeah, it's going to be good to have brand new timber on nice and shiny and I'll enjoy it while it lasts. I don't think it's going to look very nice for too long, but <laughs> okay, good morning. So first up, I'm going to paint the tray and then I'm going to wait a bit for it to dry and then I'll start ripping the old timber boards off. And chances are I am going to scratch up my new paint job while I'm doing that, but that's all right. If I do that, I'll just go back over the paint job. It's not that big of a deal. So that's the plan. Okay, so now for the fun part. I'm just going to mix up the paint. I'm just gonna guess how much thinner I need. Just don't come at me, but I'm gonna just <laughs> guess. Don't do this, guys, if you're spraying things. It is bloody hot outside, so I'm just having a breather. But um, the tray is all painted. I think I did an all right job, but um, yeah, I'll have to go up over it after I rip the timber boards out because I have a feeling I'm gonna scratch it to the shit house. But yeah, speaking of that, the fun part is coming up now. I'm gonna be ripping the boards out. <laughs> 
I'm gonna go out there, I'm gonna rip the old timber off, and then I'm gonna lay my nice new beautiful timber down. Um, and I'm super excited to see how that's gonna look on the ute, so stay tuned. So I'm actually breaking the boards to get them out because someone thought it would be a great idea to put screws that close to the headboard and now they're all seized and rusty and I can't get them out. Yeah, so what's happened is those screws have gone all rusty at the top, so I actually can't undo them without molded grips. Um, so that's a bit of a pain in the ass. All the wood's out. Now I just have to get some moldy grips on these screws and get them out. My new tray paint uh, definitely got scratched in the process of removing the timber. Have a look at this. <laughs> right, now I'm gonna lay the new timber down. I think my little home paint job on the tray turned out pretty well actually too. Good morning, it is a new day and I ran into my first little tiny issue yesterday afternoon. So as you saw, I ripped out the old timber and I went to lay in my new timber, but it's too long. <laughs> so this morning I've run to Bunnings, I've grabbed myself a little handsaw and now I'm gonna go out there and saw each board down maybe about that much, so not much. Look at that timber. Really happy with my paint job on the tray and the timber is looking really good too. I'll drop this off later to get painted. I really don't trust myself painting this. I'm really proud of my paint job on the rooftop tent frame though. All right, I'm about to start screwing it down. And guys, if you are going to be doing your own timber trays, just remember that you need to leave a small gap in between um, it just gives the timber a bit of room to swell because it will swell a little bit over time and as it weathers. Hopefully these screws do the job and I can get them nice and straight. So I'm super close to having everything finished on the cruiser. I'm heading into full drive filth today, which is an accessory fitting place in Cannes. And we're gonna be fitting all of the accessories that I bought. So the rooftop tent, the fridge, the solar panel, secondary battery, DC DC charger, the wiring, there's a light bar to go on the back. So yeah, we're gonna be extremely busy. I'm actually gonna be giving the guys a hand and we're just gonna smash it out. I'll prop the GoPro up somewhere and then a bit later on, I'll go through all the products I chose and why I chose them. excited I just picked up my awning from destination four-wheel drive and it's the last thing to put on the cruiser before I'm finished now I actually have to modify the awning a little bit we figured out the brackets that come with the destination four-wheel drive awning they're actually made to fit perfectly onto all brands of roof racks that 99% of people have on their forbies so you shouldn't have to do any modifying at all I am choosing to just because of the way I've set everything up back there so I'm gonna drill some new holes and chuck it on. That's 
a wrap for the back half of the cruiser and I could not be happier with the way that it turned out. Especially for a relatively quick and cheap little home project. I think it turned out really well, so I'm stoked with it and I can't wait to get out adventuring now. I'm just gonna quickly run through a couple of products that I chose to put on the cruiser. So the rooftop tent that I went with, because I didn't want to spend a whole heap of money and it was also on sale, was the King's MK3 Grand Tourer. Um, I've been out in the, it a couple of times now and I actually am impressed. Now, when I was on a rampage at Full Drive Supercenter, I did buy a King solar panel. But then I was given this Red Arc solar panel by a friend, so I decided to go with Red Arc instead. So as for the fridge, I went with the Evercool 40 litre slide out fridge. Honestly, I'm so happy with it. I really wanted a slide out fridge because if I got one that opened from the top, I'd be on my tippy toes all the time trying to look in there. And this is my King's control box. I know it's only early days, but I haven't had an issue um, and it's super easy to use. You've got all of these sockets here. And then on the side of it here, I've just got the controller for this little light bar that I bought from Autobahn. It was about $100, but I've just mounted it up there. It's got a bug feature and the brand is hardcore and it's really handy to have. And as you would have just seen, I fitted my destination full drive 270 awning. My friend Rafa, he actually owns the business. I go to his workshop occasionally. I see the quality of the materials he uses for these things and the passion he has for it. So that's why I'm so excited to have one on my cruiser. I know that this thing is an absolute weapon. A lot of our mutual friends have these on their on their forebears and it's huge too. It has extendable poles on the, on the end. So yeah, there you go. I hope you guys liked watching this little video of the transformation of the back half of the cruiser. I have lots of adventures coming up in the old girls, so stay tuned if you're interested in that sort of stuff. Thanks for watching, guys.